the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We and declare that the Word of God prevails over our lives. Activate possibilities, activate the supernatural. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Yesterday, we began to discuss the dynamics of the realm of the spirit. I stated a few things that I would like to, by way of a recap, just um, point out. Number one, that man was created with the ability to relate with this realm and also relate with the realm of the spirit. Number two, that God is spirit. And that information already suggests that you cannot deal with him in the flesh. You will have to be spiritual and your spirit would have to be alive to relate with God. And we did agree that the realm of the spirit is dimensional that there are planes and there are dimensions in the realm of the spirit i did say yesterday that the physical realm is only a child that was birthed by and from the realm of the spirit this is very important that everything you see in the physical world came from the realm of the spirit and that means to alter anything from this realm, you will have to reach down from the realm where it came from to alter realities. And that the Bible tells us that nothing in this realm is permanent. It's a very hopeful revelation. So that whatever you do not like, there is a possibility of reaching into the realm of the spirit to make adjustments there and deliver what you have adjusted to this realm here and now this is where the dominion of the saints lie in their ability to alter realities and compel them to look like the christ are we together and um we examined very briefly prayer as one of the keys that helps us to maximize our dual nature that prayer is one of the provisions that was made available to the saints by which we can tap into realities from the realm of the spirit um, it's a very vast subject sad i didn't do justice to it because prayer is a broad subject that can take us weeks to really cover the dimensions that are captured there in prayer prayer does many things brings transformation access fellowship we tap into the wisdom of god the bible says we speak this wisdom among them that are mature the hidden wisdom that the princes of this world did not did not know then um, and so on and so forth so i want to start this morning by challenging the fact that if we continue to walk in the illusion that things will just happen in our lives just because god is in heaven and he should take responsibility over the outcome of our lives our experiences in this kingdom would be barren and frustrating are we together yes i have respectfully challenged that thought for many years in the body of christ that the believer has a participatory role to play as far as seeing the manifestation of the kingdom the power and the glory of god is concerned and i pray that god will help us this morning the realm of the spirit operates by spiritual laws job 38 and verse 33 please pay attention the realm of the spirit operates 
by spiritual laws. It says, please give us King James if we can have it. Do you know the ordinances of heaven? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? This was Job. When the Lord came to him in response to his predicament, he was so frustrated, couldn't understand what was happening in his life. And the Bible says he summoned God. And when God came, they began to discuss the mysteries of this realm. And the Lord asked Job a question. He said, do you know the ordinances of heaven? Question one. Then if you do know them, can thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Do you know by what laws heaven governs itself? Do you know why darkness does not prevail in heaven? Do you know why God does not have to carry a mobile throne moving around heaven to judge obedience? Yes, disobedience is judged immediately or to judge disobedience. He does not have to move around supervising the angels to see that they are not rebels. And yet whatever looks like rebellion is judged immediately. By what mystery does that happen? That in heaven there is no night. There is no morning. By what mystery does that happen? And he says they are called the ordinances of heaven. That means this heaven that you see is regulated by laws. And then he says if you know those laws, can you set their dominion? Can you reproduce those laws in the earth? Because if you can, then your earth will look like heaven. Are we together now? So there are spiritual laws. People do not just rise in this kingdom. People do not just become wealthy. People do not just become powerful. People do not just become influential. No, a generation does not just love people. There's no such thing as luck. All that is just nonsense. These are exact spiritual laws that can be understood. And I pray in the name of Jesus that as we examine one or two of these laws, that the Lord will grant you access to these keys. And that as you engage them, your life will be nothing short of a wonder. Amen and amen. Are we in agreement? Laws of the Spirit. Number one, the law of faith. These are the laws that activate the realm of the Spirit. The supernatural we must be taught how to participate with the realm of the spirit the law of faith numbers chapter 23 please and verse 19 when we have it projected I like us to read it together numbers 23 and verse 19 numbers 23 and verse 19 ready read please God is not a man stop remember we discussed this yesterday that God became a man God is not a man if you say God is not a man it means he must submit to his creator all men submit to their creator so if you say God is a man the person you should worship is not him because he has become a creature hallelujah so God is not a man that he should lie this is an information about men God is taking away shock from your life already that when you meet men, this possibility exists. He didn't say bad men. God is not a man. That means in the character of every man is a tendency to lie. Now we're discussing faith. Please follow me. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? This is a very powerful information about God. That God is not a man that he should lie. That means every time you hear God speak, this revelation should be at the back of your mind. That the one speaking is not joking. This is an attestation of God's integrity. Are we together now? God is not a man. He does not have the possibility of lying. Let me tell you, the Bible did not say that he cannot lie. If God by mistake calls me a woman, I will change immediately. So 
lying is getting something wrong that ability is not in him he can't say this is light and then it does not become light so whether it's a mistake or whatever it is when he says it it will become what he said so the possibility of saying something and seeing another thing is not in god that's what the bible is saying so if he calls your pain joy it changes immediately if he calls your tomorrow blessed that tomorrow has to become blessed because god has spoken this is called integrity the character of being consistent are we together god is not a man that he should lie hebrews 11 and verse 6 this is the second information about god we're teaching faith this morning as a law that activates the supernatural the bible says but without faith outside of faith it is impossible to please him why because of this information that whoever comes to god must believe that he exists and then number two that he has a name called a rewarder it's not what he does it's who he is that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in other words don't come to god hoping you will get something don't come to god hoping he may give me there is a level of certainty and confidence that god is called a rewarder so every time i come the proof that i met him is that i never go back empty he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him not a giver a rewarder a rewarder means he gives you what you seek a giver means he gives what he has a rewarder the bible says he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you know many people in church pastor teach about faith we teach a lot about faith and um, we do our best to communicate what we know to be faith but our results clearly show that many people do not understand the subject of faith because for many believers respectfully speaking our boundary of the understanding of faith is just declaring and hoping that we'll see no that is that is a very minute part of the equation of faith the foundation of bible faith is revelation not revelation about your situation revelation about the god who will be the deliverer of that promise before you trust a man if i tell you to come and collect a hundred dollar bill your first assignment is not to come your first assignment is to vet my integrity you have to check whether i have the capacity so there are two things listen please faith in god is based on two qualities of god not all qualities of god there are just two qualities of god that are required as far as faith is concerned number one his integrity please write it down number two his ability believing god is based on the awareness of his integrity and then number two his ability ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the bible says now unto him who is able so it settles it once and for all that god is able there is never a problem with his ability he is able to do the bible says able to do not just able to speak there are men who are able to speak i can help you but they are not able to do so the bible says that god is able to do and then he says exceeding abundantly even above all we ask now the fearful part is above all we think you know how vast your mind is your mind can think dimensions that will surprise you and the bible says that is it does not scare god he has the ability to allow your mind stretch itself and says is this all you can think i am still god above it so when your requests don't seem to come it is not an issue of god's ability because sometimes you see we look at the magnitude of that which we desire god to deliver to us and um sometimes out of pity we say god okay it looks like you can't go this far okay so i come down to your level and god says the problem is never my ability so two things the integrity of god god does not lie he can be trusted number two god is el shaddai 
You know what that means? The multi-breasted one. It sustains the power to make everything that needs to be captured in your life for a fruitful Christian life available to you. This is the foundation of Bible faith. Just believing God arbitrarily does not bring faith. You have to vet his integrity. The Bible is a compendium of God's integrity. His dealings with men through several dispensations to the end that we can study and see the consistency that he is believable, that you can trust him. The Bible archives men and women who trusted God in time past. Now faith is, Hebrews 11 says, the substance of things hoped for. It calls it the evidence of things not seen. It says, for by it the elders obtained, the elders obtained, the elders obtained a good report. It says, through faith we understand that the cosmos, the worlds were framed by the word of God. Then it begins to list all of these exploits that were done by faith. If you are going to partner with the realm of the spirit to produce possibilities in this life, you will have to understand the law of faith. There are no guarantees in life. Your guarantee is the integrity of the one who sent you. We live in a world where we are obsessed with guarantees. You have to sign that you will be there for me. You have to sign that you will not fail me. You have to sign that our discussion will not change eventually. Unfortunately, this world does not have guarantees. Your guarantee is the integrity of the one who sits upon the throne. So he can send you and say, go to US and not tell you what to do there. And yet you go, knowing that when you arrive there, he will speak. We are weak because we do not trust God. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. So don't tell me you love him. I already know. Take him there and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. You've not shown me the mountain. Just start moving. When you get there, I will tell you. Bible says, if ye be the children of Abraham, then you will do the works of Abraham. Trust in God. I believe God are we together now so revelation now the end of your revelation about God should produce something in you the Bible calls persuasion please say after me persuasion we're defining the faith equation now that revelation leads to conviction or persuasion it was the apostle that said for I know whom I have believed he said and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Conviction. What is conviction? Your depth of persuasion. Your unbendedness. I know he will do it. I know he will do it. If he said I will lift you this year, I know he will do it. I take my eyes away from the temporary setbacks because I know he will do it. Conviction. Conviction supplies your staying power when the situations refuse to change. Conviction, so you, you, you can say, no, I know this God. The reason why we vacillate in our trust and our convictions is because we have not had an encounter with the integrity and the ability of God. You know, the way God speaks, pastor, he does not speak like he's talking to men. He speaks to men like he's talking to himself. This is why it's very frustrating to hear God. Many people like to hear God, but if you really hear God, you will wish you didn't hear him. So you will have an excuse to just live your life because hearing God has implications. It would demand a responsibility on your part that you will need grace for. For instance, God will not say, go and build that house. God will say, when it's complete, let me know. This is how God speaks. He does not talk to men like he's talking to men. He talks to men like he's talking to himself. So he will talk as if there is no process in the entire thing. Now you are crying over a bill of 1 billion naira, 2 billion naira, and God talks to you and never talks about the money. He says, ensure the house has space for children ensure it has a mission arm and you are saying lord this is not the issue we have architects in portacot and god never talks about where the weakness is 
he expects you to trust him enough if ye being evil there is a name god is called abba abba means source it means sustainer it also means defender and the character of fatherhood according to god's teaching is giving if ye being evil know how to give so a father who does not give is evil are we together now i'm saying this because there are many of us who are wondering how will my destiny be built the dreams that i have the visions that i have are mighty they are enormous and you begin to stress yourself putting a burden on your uncle he was not designed to supply and get you're getting angry at people everywhere listen to me save yourself that stress there is a God in heaven who has integrity and ability. Every miracle looks impossible till it happens. Whether you need five naira or five million is still faith that will produce it. So in the realm of the spirit, it doesn't matter whether what you have, whether you reduce it or increase it, it makes no difference. It is still faith that will bring it. Please understand what I'm sharing with you this morning. And then you will no longer be afraid of the future. Every man you see whose life has become enviable today had no guarantees anywhere. There was no bank, no uncle, no nothing. No. Men went like madmen at the instance of the, the word of the Lord. Men went to virgin lands that they did not know anything about. Can you believe God enough? Apostle, I came to Port Harcourt. It's not my fault. I had a dream. God said, come here. Now I'm here. And look what God is making out of my life. We're talking God, the creator of the ends of the earth. The one who has said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. There are attributes of God that when you know, the devil cannot speak to you again. The devil manipulates your gaps in your understanding of God and he plants seeds based on attributes of God you do not know. The prodigal son knew something about his father. That no matter what it is, I know that my father loves me. And he said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be called your son. But take me as one of your servants. Smart man. He knew the father will never take him as a servant. It's just a diplomatic way of saying, I'm sorry. There is something about God that if and when you know, even when you have a dream that negates it, oh dear, I wish I had time. I hope you know that the realm of the spirit cannot be made manifest until you receive and agree with whatever is there including your dream if i have a dream today for instance and i see myself maybe losing out in life or failing i can get up believing it has happened no the dream is seeking for your permission listen listen at the expense of your eternal salvation, God still seeks for your permission to come into a life he created. What else should not seek for your permission to come? You know, the way the devil has made us believe is like he has the ability to veto anything. No. He's a master of the sense realm. He knows how to manipulate spiritual realities. If God can be polite enough to knock at the door of your heart, and wait till you open it then that dream can wait then that oppression can wait they all knock you just don't know they are knocking they knock by acting they are in your life already so your fear allows them to come in goodness how did we get here let's go back to what we're discussing faith are you blessed this morning already so conviction everybody say conviction yes you need conviction i believe god i believe god i know he said this now watch this the next step you take when you are convicted please understand this the end of conviction in fact is knowing the participatory role you have to play in actualizing that spiritual reality now please wake up if you're sleeping because this is where believers 
have been cheated for many years they think all it takes to the equation of faith is to believe god and that's it you believe god well done but you will never see it manifest there is always a participation between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm to get anything transported from the realm of the spirit to this realm please never forget it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above um you know high above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you joshua 1 verse 8 this book of the law it says shall not depart from out of thy mouth it says but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do to do to do not just to say faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what he commands that is attached to the promised for instance the bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty claiming the promises of god and claiming you are blessed without understanding the participatory role will only be you mocking yourself are we together every dimension of possibility we seek to transfer from the realm of the spirit has exact conditions the assignment of the spirit of revelation is to open you up to the dimensions the requisite level of obedience you need to know what to do good master when poor people came to jesus they said help us when wealthy people came they said good master what should i do to be saved they knew that it, it there has to be responsibility attached good master what should i do there, there has to be a posture that i take are we blessed apostle i desire restoration in my life there is a provision restoration restoration in the bible has always been based on discerning the prophetic voice that you need to approach to speak to you it is the prophetic that controls restoration according to scripture your assignment is to locate the prophet sent not the prophet available the prophet sent there are words that are spoken there are words that are sent the word that delivers is the one sent he sent forth his word not spoke forth his word there were many widows in Zarephath, the Bible says. So Elijah passed some and greeted them and they greeted him back because he was not sent to them. He went to the one he was sent to. It is not just every available anointing that helps you. It is the one sent to you. Discerning it now is your own assignment. But when you do find it, then restoration can come. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. They met the right prophet. And he said, where fell it? He threw a stick and it came up. If they didn't have that miracle, they will write a theology that God cannot restore. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you so you do what you do this season we need a hallelujah listen to me i will share with you a story that i've not shared in many platforms many years ago I was in this city I dropped at number 23 Equerry Street nowhere to go nobody to see I stopped there with one bag and 800 naira that was it your city by faith When I was coming into this city yesterday, tears filled my eyes. When you see the end of faith, it is glory. 
help him please within a year what God had done in my life is something I will reserve for another time please do not tell me it's because I don't know anybody you are joking I'm not speaking nonsense I know what I'm saying somewhere in this city the Lord gave me an instruction to give everything that I had I carried everything put it in one bag dragged it and dropped it in the church and went back as though I was returning from a funeral we are here for you come and We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts. Come and do what you do. Now listen, listen. Speaking is only one of the keys that activate faith believing is only one of the keys that activate faith God is showing you what you might be doing wrong please sit for a few minutes for many of us all we do is in the name of Jesus I am rising I'm going from glory to glory wonderful you are not wrong but speaking is not the only key connected to the miracles that you desire Speaking is powerful, but the speaking is only activated when you satisfy the conditions. For instance, Apostle, there's nobody who wants to help me. There's nobody who wants to be my friend. No, and you begin to declare in the name of Jesus, good people are coming into my life. Wonderful, but that will remain as a confession. There is a condition for friends that he who desires friends must first show himself friendly it is your responsibility to master the laws of relationship and while you are studying heaven is marking your script that you are truly preparing yourself to meet a destiny helper it is your understanding the dynamics of relationship that is you are satisfying the participatory roles don't just confess and then a bad attitude drives a destiny helper recycles your pain for another four years believers hear me the Bible is able to make men wise even unto salvation because it opens us up to the responsibilities are we together now yes Apostle, I want people to listen to me. I want people to love me, whether in business or ministry. There are many dynamics to it. It is not just the grace of God. The anointing is, look, let me tell you something. The anointing finds its credence from knowledge and intelligence. When, when the anointing comes upon, um, comes upon a life that is not enlightened, it will short circuit the potential of that anointing. The value of the anointing is when it comes upon an enlightened mind. Thou anointed my head, not my cup. The problem is not the cup. I want to see results in my cup, but what is anointed is my head. That's where the information is. So the anointing comes in partnership with the information that is on your head, and the result shows on your cup. So if you want him to anoint your cup, it doesn't work that way. The problem is not the cup. The cup is a report card. Thou anointest my head with oil. And then my cup shows what is on my head. Are we together? So you must find out. There is a law called the law of competence. And that competence is like a magnet. It is able to not just attract people, but it gives you the luxury of selecting the kind of people. So if you want to be able to deal, you see, miracles attract multitudes, but it is wisdom that attracts kings. So when you want to meet kings, it takes more than being a miracle worker. The queen of Sheba was not moved by Solomon's 
uh, all of the stories she was hearing because she had resolved herself. The prophet said, Arise, Isaiah 60 and verse 1, shine, for thy light is come. Amplified says, Arise from the depression and prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. He says, For your light is come, and the glory of God is risen upon you. He says, For darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles shall come to your light. He didn't say kings will come to your light. Kings don't come to light, they come to applicable. You can take it out of this service and know. I now know why a certain kind of people are not coming to my shop. It's not just a demonic attack. Excellence is a language. There are those who can speak it. Just like your language here. So when you begin to speak that language, you will hear a response from those who can speak it. When you understand faith, you will know that a major part of faith lies with the believer, not God. Are we blessed? So you make up your mind that I'm going to be competent. As a minister in the name of Jesus, I will be competent because I desire the nations to hear my voice. God will not announce what does not look like him. He will keep building you till you look like him. There is, there is a requisite level of spiritual competence that you must attain for him to blow you like a shofar to the nations. It's not just saying, I'm not just talking of excellence in the flesh alone. A track record of diligence with the spirit. I know God will do it. It looks like it's a, it's a very comforting statement, but it's not spiritual. Are we blessed? So you must find out the conditions that are attached to the things that you desire. I desire restoration. There is a condition. I desire kingdom, wealth, and prosperity. There is a restoration. There is, there is um, what they call it, there is a condition. Now the pandemic sadly has hit across the nations and many people are trusting God for increase. Many people are trusting God. You need more than wealth. You need favor. That's what you need. And the proof of favor, sir, is that your hands are never empty. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. So emptiness has an explanation. When your hands are empty, there is a, an exact spiritual law you are breaking that is responsible for that outcome. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part. The Bible says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. I've always said it that when the grace for favor is on you, only a blind man ignores you. The Bible says favor works with the power of sight. That when it truly is upon you, anyone who looks upon you is compelled to bless you. But for many years we've been taught that favor is unmerited. It is only favor as it relates to salvation that is unmerited. Every other dimension is merited. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. The very definition of favor is why we don't get it. Good understanding does what? So understanding is a giver. And the name of what it gives is favor. Transgression is also a giver. The name of what it gives is hardship. Hardship has an exact explanation many things that we think are just have hazard are products of our violating or obeying spiritual laws you have to be meek enough to accept this in this morning service this is the key that activates the realm of the spirit so you leave this service taking responsibility Knowing that this is not just God's fault, I take responsibility. Why am I not seeing favor in my life? The word says it should be. Why am I not seeing speed in my life? The word says it should be. Then you insist and the spirit of grace comes to empower you to help you. Then your life becomes a living wonder and you are not just happy. Do you know there is a way you can have results? You are afraid of it because you don't know how it came. So you don't even know how it is kept. God wants to bring you to a point where you are not afraid of your result because you know the ability to reproduce it is there. Are we together?
so find out the conditions attached to every dimension of the kingdom you may be a pastor here and you are saying apostle i'm trusting god for increase in ministry there are exact spiritual laws that govern church growth it's not haphazard human beings are not animals they are intelligent beings there are exact conditions that must be kept number one for instance if i be lifted up from the earth there is a promise that i will draw men so when you keep lifting yourself you are fighting that law and you find out that men will not god is committed only to draw men when he is lifted Number two, John 4, 48, except they see miraculous signs and wonders, they will not believe. People will not leave their homes and come for nothing. I assure you, human beings are busy. Whatever will make them dedicate three, four, five hours of their lives, they, they must be sure they will be transformed, healed, blessed, and light. Applicable spiritual knowledge whose relevance they can see within their context here and now. Are we together? Yes. We have a few minutes. We are going to pray. I don't mean to take you back sad memories. Forgive me if I do. But during the recent protest, unfortunately, people boggled a lot of warehouses. Pastor, there was no publicity. There was no usher. There was no protocol. Nobody even telling them where the address is. Hunger has an interesting way of giving people energy and passion. When they found those things, they went to any length. What if you are that warehouse? Exactly what happened to that warehouse is what will happen to you. All men will seek for you. They will come from every nook and cranny whatever is in that warehouse if you transport it to yourself in the similitude of that passion they will come and they will wait they will inconvenience themselves people were not afraid whether camera picked them or not when people begin to pay attention to certain things it's a sign that that they, they have already concluded that some results cannot be gotten I prayed a prayer years ago. I said, Lord, do something upon my life for the sake of your glory. May I never meet with someone twice for that person to, to be changed. My condition for transformation is one encounter. If I have to meet you twice, I will go for a retreat. It's not pride. It's the truth. What if that is your last chance? It's called the law of value. There is what when you possess, only wealthy people seek you. There is what when you possess, only poor people seek you. There is what when you possess, only your tribesmen seek you. There is what when you possess, only a region will seek you. But like Jesus, when you possess certain qualities, all men will seek for you. This is what makes you Beulah and Hephzibah. You become a delight of nations. The law of faith. Is God challenging us this morning? Please let me challenge you. There are many of us, you need to go back and begin to walk on yourself. You need to go back, walk on your shop. Go back. Follow them who through faith and patience have obtained. Not are obtaining, have obtained. Results. Love everybody but don't trust people who don't have results. Their opinions vacillate. They are sincere, but you need results. Are we together? You need to go back. You are a preacher. Trust God for grace. Lord, I believe your word concerning me. That the nations would drink of the grace of God upon my life. But now is not the time to run around trusting God for invitations. Go back. The way you announce yourself is to remain in the secret place. So when he walks upon you, you become a treasure. You are a businessman. Trust God for grace. You may need to take a few certifications. You may do not see what you are doing as a waste of time. That is your participatory role. Do it with excellence. You are activating faith. You are partnering with the realm of the spirit. You are a public speaker. Trust God for grace. Don't just speak anyhow and say it does not matter. What then are you calling us for? Obtain grace. Sit down. Be strict on yourself. 
don't pity your tears love your tomorrow more than your tears and whilst you do that the realm of the spirit is bearing witness to that which you do john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance we're going to pray are you blessed this morning god is not a man that he should lie he's a god of justice he is true if you do that which should be done then i guarantee you the result is waiting for you there are people in this church for instance who have been serving faithfully and the devil may be lying to you what then is the benefit of service go back to the bible and find out the lifting power of service that overnight god can lift a man elisha had no business being a prophet he was a farmer the prophet should come from the school of prophets but one man's service and loyalty vetoed that list and created his own list until he became a prophet fear people who serve there is nothing they cannot become that whilst you are cleaning this in the morning shalakatosa lord you told me i will be lifted you do not know that there are witnesses the realm of the spirit nothing is hidden and while you are doing that god will carry someone's prayer point and give you as a gift as a reward for service hallelujah i desire the anointing of the holy spirit upon my life and when i read scripture the bible says follow them who through faith and patience pastor i remember i was in joss and I stood for six hours at the Reinhardt Bonke Crusade. I was already a preacher. I would have said, I'm a preacher, I have revelation. What is this man even sharing? A simple story that will make you almost sleep. That kind of dishonor will drive the anointing from your life. I stood there for six hours like a madman. And I was watching him preach. And when I received the grace, I knew it came. We are going to pray. I hope and pray that this morning service has opened you up to see that time never changes anything. Time only reveals. It is your decision out of a heart of faith. The revelation of who God is, his integrity and his ability. when the day you believe god and engage the principles apostle will i ever raise godly children yes when the day you believe god and you understand the bible said train up a child in the way he should go not the way you want him to go there is a way he should go your first assignment is to find out what way it is you see that yes. apostle i've lost everything in my life can I have it back? Ah, the Bible says there is hope for a tree. There is hope for a tree. What then is the key? Restoration is a ministry of the prophetic. That means when your pastor stands to declare over you, you don't just say, ah, my pastor. No, this is a man of God sent to me. I receive of that which comes from him and it sustains the ability to activate realities in your life. And we pray, please rise up on your feet. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts. Set our hearts on you. Come and the Bible says in Mark chapter 4 we're praying now please give it to us Mark 11 I meant to say from verse 23 Mark 11 23 we're praying verily verily I say unto you house on the rock Portacot whatsoever whosoever shall say to this mountain 
be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he said the law is in verse 24 please look up therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them then you shall have them you can never have what you have not received you see listen the bible says the proof that you will have is when you receive it and that the instrument for reception in the spirit is prayer that when you pray knowing that god is a giver receive it and you will have it you will never have what you have not received we are praying now so that we will receive are you ready to receive lift your voice in the realm of the spirit begin to pray i receive grace i receive wisdom someone is praying in the name of jesus i receive so that i may have i receive so that i may have i receive wisdom so that i may manifest wisdom i receive so that i will have I receive so that I will have hallelujah praise the Lord you're going to pray father take away all that attempts to make you look like you are not a God of integrity in my life I declare that I trust you someone prophesy I trust God I trust God lift your voice and speak to every lie speak to every lie in your business speak to every lie God I trust you in your spiritual work with God in your family I trust you you are dependable you are a God of integrity you are a God of ability. You are a God of integrity. You are a God of ability. Shabakata branda kasala kusa branda salaya. Shile branda skoto shala branda sosia padada. Isaiah 43 and verse 26 we are going to declare now when it has to do with creation or transporting spiritual realities your words are powerful and we are going to be making declarations in the name of Jesus Isaiah 43 and verse 26 it says put me in remembrance let us plead together it says declare thou that ye might be justified we are going to make some declarations in the name of Jesus that you will take the word of God and put it on the lips of faith do not let the devil make you feel you are making noise whether it is over your business or your family is someone ready to speak open your mouth and begin to speak God's word I decree and declare that I am the head and not the tail I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that my path is as a shining light shining ever brighter please declare unto the perfect day i declare that gentiles come to my light 
there are kings to the brightness of my rising for my shame i receive double in the name of jesus where i have been deserted so that no man pass through me i become an eternal excellency a joy of many generations program your realities in the spirit a thousand shall fall by my right ten thousand by my right hand none shall harm me with my eyes shall i behold and see the reward of the wicked i decree and declare that i love righteousness and hate wickedness therefore god even my god has anointed me with an oil of gladness above my fellows in the name of jesus the christ of god hallelujah hallelujah we have five more minutes and we're done exodus 3 21 the spirit of god is still taking me back to that scripture and the lord is saying that one of the things that most of us need here is the favor of god upon our lives read it together and we're going to pray this please i like you when it's time to pray don't don't worry about who is by at your left or right i like you to pray from the depth of your heart and I will give Joshua Selman favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that from today as I go I shall not go empty lift your voice and begin to prophesy as I go as I go as I go spiritually as I go financially I shall not go empty in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Shalanda kapraska paruta shalakato ebrakate sobari sasadiata as I go spiritually as I go financially I shall not go empty my bands are full with corn with wine and oil The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. And they said among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. It says, the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then it says, turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. We are going to pray. Now, listen, listen. This is the last prayer point and then I speak over your life. You are going to challenge every mountain that has stood before you listen you are a priest now don't be silent you're going to lift your voice are we together atmosphere those challenges by name in the name of Jesus your power is broken over my life prayerlessness lack of resources this favor someone is engaging the realm of the spirit change shift redirect reorder who are thou mountain before the river bell who are thou mountain before the river bell in the name of jesus you become a plain land in the name of jesus you become a plain land in the name of jesus you become a plain land i call for joy 
I call for peace. I call for power. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call for peace. I call for restoration by the Spirit of the Christ. My faith is alive. I believe in Jesus. My eyes will behold the wonderful power of the Spirit. I want to speak over your life and I want you to believe it so that you will return back home knowing that I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of God you don't find this in a bank you don't find this in a lecture hall there are things you only find in the house of God I decree and declare over your life in the name of Jesus Christ who is the Son of God every door that has refused to open over your destiny i come tonight by the anointing of the spirit i speak to that door be opened now be opened now be opened now please help them be open now be open now hear me I place an unction upon your head that from this morning service I declare carry on common grace wonder walking grace listen I don't know who has been experiencing delay in this place that the only thing growing in your life is your age every other thing has refused to grow but I stand here in the name of Jesus I declare to you receive speed 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 spiritually receive speed financially receive speed I accelerate your results by the power of the Holy Ghost anyone trusting God for a job here in the next three months I stand by the spirit of prophecy I speak to you in the name of Jesus who is the Christ of God return with your testimony return with your testimony hallelujah the Bible says and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon I want to call the helpers of your destiny I prophesy to the north of Port Harcourt, the south of Port Harcourt, east and west whoever must show up in your life and hold your hands to the next level I compel them to appear in your destiny finally let me speak over your finances there is a bird that can bring bread for Elijah at Brook Cherries listen there are three dimensions of wealth the first dimension of wealth has to do with transacting value are we together now you transact value and you receive rewards in exchange the second level has to do with the blessings that come from transforming lives you don't sell that value you give it free the rewards that come is the appreciation from the lives changed but the third dimension of wealth is called sovereign wealth wealth by prophecy that God is able to activate possibilities in the life of a man he says believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established he says believe in his prophets was it not the prophet that said by this time tomorrow I want to speak over someone's life in the name of Jesus the son of the living God before this year 2020 comes to an end I stand by the God who sent me and I speak over your life may your finances change in a way that will surprise you and I also pray for your spiritual life whatever has destroyed your prayer life 
your passion for the things of God in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your life fresh fire upon your life fresh hunger for the word fresh hunger for prayer fresh hunger for the house of God fresh dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 